I pass. And yes, I pass and clicks. Okay, I pass and clicks of uh, 2011. But in reality, there was no employers. There was no demand for nurses in the Philippines. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm your nurse GMAT. Um, Welcome to my vlog. Welcome to my world. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who watched my first vlog of um, how to become a USR. I was really touched when I got like a 500 views in 24 hours. Wow. Thank you. Um, I would also like to say thank you to Lifora, Philippine Nurses Group, Philippine Registered Nurses for accepting my post and allowing my vlog to be shown to, do, to their um, subscribers or to their likers. So thank you for that and I am grateful. And okay. let me just say the nurses nowadays are very lucky for this uh, Facebook pages because you can easily ask questions and someone will answer your question if you had some uh, issues with your applications for your NCLEX or IELTS or visa screen. So, so um, now this is um, like the second part of how to become a USRN. So I'll discuss to you the timeline. Uh, let me ask you a question. Why did you take up nursing? So uh, I was always uh, asked that question. Why not? You will hear a lot of like stories of uh, nurses going to the US, getting high, huge amount of salaries. And I was inspired by that. Um, and to be honest, of course, you want to earn dollars. Um, so that one of the deciding factors that led me to take uh, nursing. Nursing was really booming. Like it was like the peak of nursing on that time. And a lot of nursing schools have opened to a lot of nursing students. And then almost everyone wants to be a nurse. Doctors wanted to be a nurse back then too, just to come here um, in the USA, right? So I studied nursing at uh, Aquinas University or the USD Legaspi, and I graduated 2008. Local board exam usually takes place around June and November of the year. I didn't take the June local board because... Uh, I don't want to rush myself, you know, um, <clears throat> and uh, I was really trying to to eye for a higher uh, board rating. Everyone is getting nursing as their core. The competition was really stiff, and for me to get a good job, I need to have a higher board rating, right? So that's what I did. Um, I reviewed, I took the November local board exam of 2008. Uh, around February, I got uh, the result. I passed the local board exam. And true enough, I got higher rating. I got 84.2% board rating because I did, I, I didn't want just to pass it. I wanted to ace it. I actually wanted to be in the top 10 back then. That was that was a dream for me, but <laughs> why not, right? I think the top 10 then was eight, under 85%, so I was very close. While reviewing, I was also doing some volunteer works. I was volunteering in a hospital in Sorsogon, and... Um, 
while I was waiting for the, the result also of the local board. And then um, when I passed, I continued the volunteer work, continue earning uh, experience, right? And then it was on June of 2010 that I started applying for and really want to go to the U.S. Be prepared. I mean, financially, you should have a uh, research first of uh, the costs or the fees that you'll need to pay before you can take them. I know it's it was not easy. I was thankful for my parents. I was thankful for my brother for supporting me financially, and because this is a serious like amount of money that you you need for NCLEX, for Visa Screen, and all of those stuff. Just make sure to be serious. Take this very seriously because you don't want to retake the NCLEX again. It's very stressful, guys. So. Keep in mind to take it just one, one time and pass it, and you're, you're good. So um, back then, I didn't, um, my first goal was to take the California NCLEX, but they don't give you U.S. Li active license there unless you, you give them a social security number. And there is no way for me to get a secure social security number unless I'm already here, right? Plan to apply to the easiest state that I can get to pass the NCLEX. That was the plan, just to pass the NCLEX and get an active license. Decided to go to Vermont. So uh, I'm going to discuss a little bit of uh, Vermont application for NCLEX. So for you to, uh, to apply, complete an online application and, um, and pay the application fee of $90 and then have your CES report through CGFNS. And then once you're uh, approved, you can register to person view to get your authorization to test. Okay? Okay, let's talk about CES. So CES is uh, being um, done by the CGFNS. CGFNS is uh, the Commission on Graduates of Foreign Nursing Schools. It is an independent immigration neutral nonprofit organization that helps foreign educated healthcare professionals live and work in the country of choice by assessing and validating their academic and professional credentials. It was created to evaluate, test, and certify foreign educated nurses. So, basically, um, it's the one who will evaluate your credentials. There are two types of CGFNS. Uh, CES report, it's the professional, and then uh, academic report. So, we choose the professional report because this is the one who is required for us the Mont Board of Nursing. So professional report is basically the they're checking if the standard of nursing in the Philippines meets the standards of nursing in the USA. So um, but we have no problem for that because basically our uh, standards is based on the U.S. standards, right? So let's see the process of CES uh, application. You have to register and create your online account, fill out the information. This will serve as your account for you to, to see update the status of your application. Prepare and send the request for academic records or transcripts form to any nursing or nursing-related post-secondary tertiary schools that you attended outside of the U.S. So, when you um, select the CES report, you will have to print the forms. Um, the forms there, basically the, the academic record uh, the request for academic records or transcript forms, the um, request for validation of license, registration or diploma form to PRC. 
also your secondary school diploma this part is tedious guys because um once you print all the forms what you have to go to your school registrar to request it hey for for that form to be filled up they're supposed to send it the schools is supposed to send it to um cgfns um address and then when you go to prc2 they're supposed to send the uh, the forms to cgfns okay anyway additional information uh, some states require an ielts when you apply for ces but the vermont didn't require so i didn't have to worry about ielts before applying for NCLEX. And then, with regard to the diploma, once you graduated uh, more than t 10 years, they can uh, they usually waive it. You don't have to send the diploma. You waited from high school more than 10 years. And then by November 1, I received the approval from the state of Vermont that I can take the NCLEX. So once you receive that, you have a year a year to take the NCLEX so once you receive the approval letter you have to um, register to person view to request the person view to send you it to send your ATT or your authorization authorization to test so once you receive the authorization 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 <laughs> to test you have three months upon receiving it to take the NCLEX. So make sure before you apply for ATT that you're ready because you're, you, you will only be given three month uh, allowance to, uh, to take your NCLEX. Okay, that's November 1. Uh, February 9, 2011. I got the authorization to test and then I scheduled my NCLEX the, the month after which is March 15 of 2011 okay I took it in Trident Tower in Makati yeah and then um, I also av availed uh, the quick result because yeah, two days after your exam, that's which is worth a seven point ninety five dollars back then. Well, I paid rather than wait for a long time just to know if you pass or not, right? So after two days, I I check if I pass, and then I pass. And yes, I pass and clicks. Okay, I pass and clicks of uh, twenty eleven. But in reality, there was no employers, there was no demand for nurses in the Philippines. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. But you know what? Um, I didn't lose hope back then. My uh, focus was really to come here. So um, even with retrogression, um, I was really positive and I was very hopeful that it will open up again the u.s will open up again for nurses here but it but it took a long time you know um 2011 i was a local board passer i was a u.s licensed nurse but i didn't really have a decent job i wasn't getting any decent salary and um, I didn't want to depend so much on my parents back then you know <laughs> they would always ask you how's your application when are you going to the USA back then it was really um, frustrating because they don't understand what's happening and 
it's hard to explain. <laughs> um, so yeah, I decided to to go to Manila and apply for work. And then one time I saw an ad um, like from a business, uh, from a BPO, Business Process Outsourcing. Um, accept U.S. registered nurses uh, for a U.S. company that will, you know, um, review medical claims. And before two uh, call centers, BPO was uh, really popular. And um, yes, I applied to the big hospitals in Manila, but to no avail. So I said, uh, let me get this job just to get, uh, just to earn money because I couldn't um, depend so much on my parents anymore. I took the job. It was, it was like one of the best decision, decisions of my life too because I found uh, my real friends there and they're actually, I mean, like 90 more than 90 percent of us there is already here my co-workers in that bpo was already here and we we developed a really good uh, relationship so i stayed there there for a year from 2011 to 2013. yeah and then uh 2013 philippine heart center called me uh, they called me and they, if I can go to an interview and then I started working in Philippine Heart Center. Oh my God, that was like a dream hospital for me back then. I learned so much from Philippine Heart Center. So I, my skills today is because of Philippine Heart Center. My knowledge, my skills, and my attitude, aka AKS. AKS. Attitude, skills, and knowledge is <laughs> because of Philippine Heart Center. And I uh, I was there for five years. I started in medical surgical ward for like three years and I became an ICU. Um, no, it's CCU actually. It's a coronary care unit, but they, but they are considered as an ICU nurse too, as an ICU too. So for two years, and wow, that was that was a pretty amazing um, experience too. And aside from the experience. We are compensated well too, we, and we were we were lucky. And um, so, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> so around uh, January of two thousand fifteen, while I was browsing my 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 phone, I saw an ad in Facebook, um, which is my, currently my agency. Uh, Passport USA. I saw their ad, and they're they're looking for U.S. licensed nurses to go to the USA. That they're gonna sponsor or they're gonna petition to go to the USA. Lied online. I sent them my my resume and my other and the other requirements and then um, uh, they scheduled me for an interview with an international recruiter for the interview they gave me the contract it's an online it's a DocuSign review it's a DocuSign contract so it's an online um, contract thing and then they gave they gave me a month to decide um, if I would want to pursue it so they gave me the contract uh, on the 21st of January 2015 and I com I signed it after a month which is February 21 2015 <laughs> Well I took my time I 
I really tried to research and um, read the contract so that, you know, it's not, well, when you, when you sign a contract, you're bound for it. That started my, uh, my application, basically, for U.S.